Hi there, I'm Tanya with Free Range Cottage, and I wanna show you my thrift and antique haul over the past week. We visited some estate sales, some flea markets, and a couple of thrift stores. So keep watching, and I'm gonna show you all the fun stuff we found. Hey friends, if you're like me, you love thrifted antique and vintage home decor to mix in with your new pieces. We had visited a couple of estate sales on the weekend and also hit up some flea markets about an hour from here that we don't always go to, but we like to go every once in a while, just make the rounds and see what we can find. And then even went to a couple of thrift stores. I'm gonna start with the uh, couple of estate sale things that we found and the blue and white dishes of course got me and these do not have a mark on the bottom but they were so unique this one does but i just love of course the blue transferware and this blue and white and i just thought they were so unique because they have these sort of metal cages built wired right around the plates and I thought, how beautiful would that be mixed in on a plate wall or a basket wall, or even just using as serving or decorative pieces. Just beautiful. And I paid, I wanna say two or three dollars for this one. And I think I paid close to five for this one. It's quite a bit bigger. Another estate sale on the same day. And I happened to find this blue and white dish which I think is beautiful. And I did look into this a little bit. It's Ridgeway, um, R-I-D-G-W-A-Y pottery. And it is the castle, historic castles series. Do I have that upside down? I do. And I just thought it was beautiful. It's got the uh, crazing lines in there. So what I researched, it's between 25 and $60 value. It's from between the 1940s and the 1960s. I couldn't quite nail down exactly what year this would have been from, but I paid $7 for this one at an estate sale. And well worth it, beautiful platter. And then this was from a flea market. I don't, I really don't need any more bottles or jars. I, I'm really, a, I love baskets, bottles, jars, things that can hold things. But this one was so unique, again, with the metal, it just has the chicken wire around it. But the bottle itself is really, really pretty. It's, it's a nice, heavy bottle, and it's got markings on it, and it's got kind of this sort of like ribbing on it. It's a heavy, beautiful bottle. So I thought, how pretty would that be up on a shelf or to use as a vase? Really pretty, and I paid $3 for that. The more the blue and whites. This Mexican pottery I found, and I paid $2 for this dish. Just a beautiful piece. I love pottery these days. It kind of mixes in with that farmhouse, boho, um, sort of global kind of feel, vintage. Okay, what's my next thing? Oh, I love this little stool. You know, you can see, I'm gonna have to sand it down or paint it or something but look at the really neat detail on this. I feel like I wanna use this as a pattern and make a bunch more of these. They're so cute. And I paid $6 for that. And it's very, very sturdy. It was kind of, sometimes you have to stay at an estate sale or somewhere that has a lot of things. They did have a lot of things left, surprisingly, when we got there. And a lot of times I just have to walk around for a little while and let my eyes just take everything in because this was buried. This was buried under, you know, they had used it sort of as a display and it just had things piled all over it and in front of it. And I didn't find this until we were almost ready to leave. And I went, wait a minute, is that a stool under there? So sometimes you have to dig. I also found a really cool uh, floor lamp, which is over here, I'll show this to you. It's not a heavy brass piece. Like if it was the brass that had just been tarnished and stuff, I would leave it. But it's just a lightweight, you know, originally probably not a very expensive lamp. So I'm probably going to paint that in black to look more like an iron uh, lamp. 
and I can always use those little reading lamps. They're so nice to just pull up to any kind of chair or couch. Or I gotta dig things out. I don't even remember everything I got. It's been a couple days. Let's see. Oh, this was a thrift store find. And I don't know how old they are, if they're old. These were 75 cents a piece, but I always love a little bit of sort of industrial. And they have measuring uh, marks on the back. And then it says vanilla, Beck Vanilla Products, East St. Louis, Illinois. And it says vanilla flavors exclusive and vanilla in the middle, just way too cute. One of them is a little bit more worn than the other, but that didn't faze me at all. 75 cents a piece. These, these were also from that same thrift store, 75 cents a piece. And you know, the thrift store prices have gone up around here, but I still can find sometimes those, those great deals. These are Caribe, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Puerto Rico, USA pottery. I did look that up and they have lots of different styles not a lot i didn't find a lot of them a lot of them are colorful and i really liked the scallop on these they're sort of a restaurant wear a little bit heavier feel to them but nice size for cereal or salad bowls fruit bowls whatever and found four of those for 75 cents a piece so of course i'm always finding my kitchen stuff i might as well just open a kitchen shop because i love the kitchen stuff now at a flea market I found this brass tray and I think I took the tag off of it, but I think I paid five or six dollars for it, which I kind of carried around and went, I don't know if I want to pay that. But I just thought of if you had seen my last thrift haul with those etched glassware, I just thought how pretty would they be on this uh, sitting on a shelf or on a table or a lot of people are doing these bar carts now, which we talked about before, but um, just that, that vintage brass and it's got the nice handles. Another piece that I bought at the, I believe it was the flea market and I think I paid, yeah, this was a flea market and I paid just a few dollars for it. And it seems, um, it was, it seemed weird to rob that I was buying it. Let's put it that way. It's a wooden crate. Clearly somebody made it. But my thinking was that it would look so great. I don't have a bottle to put in it yet, but you know, those carboy, carboy bottles, that's hard to say, um, to put in there. And I could even stencil a little bit of something on here, but I've wanted to make a lamp out of a carboy bottle. And I thought if I could find the right bottle now, um, this would be really, really beautiful and it wouldn't be very expensive if I could find a good price on the bottle. If you've watched the last third haul, you know I was looking for vintage books while well, I hit the haul this time. So I'll show you some of these. This one I found for 75 cents at, a, at the second estate sale we went to, and it's, it's really cute. It's got, it's full of poetry, and it's sort of that um, vintage red, Again, I don't do a lot of red in my house, but I do love the vintage red mixed in with different things at different times of the year, mostly Christmas, but um, this one is soft colored enough that I think it could mix with pink, and I do like pink a lot. So that was 75 cents. Now, these, this is a different story. This is Harvard Classics. There were 50 of these. And they're from, we've since looked through and found that these were published in 1909. So they are actual antique books. They're beautiful. They have a gorgeous patina and they have all kinds of classic um, stories in them. Plutarch's Lives. Um, what else was in there? The Divine, they have Dante. They have all kinds of classic what is this one? Virgil, all kinds of classic stories. Just beautiful, can you imagine? On a shelf, the display possibilities are what, I love the, I'm a book fiend, I love them, but also just to use them for display, especially um, vintage wise, they are gorgeous. So there was a set of 50 of those 
and I tried to get them cheaper, but I ended up paying $75 for those, which was hard to take, but they would not come down anymore. And I did look around at them online and they it was a fraction of the price of what I could touch that for. So I always thought, well, I could always turn around and resell them if I have buyer's remorse, but um, I don't think these are gonna go anywhere. I don't know, I'm still thinking it through. And then I also got a complete set of Dickens works and that was um, 30 volumes. And these are just beautiful. I don't know what year they're from, we can't quite, I haven't researched really um, in depth on it, but it doesn't say in the book. It doesn't give a publishing date that I can find in the book, but I would think they're early 1900s, I feel like. It's got sewn binding in there and just beautiful. And again, that whole set was 75 bucks. So I spent some money on some books. It's funny because my niece, who is my age, there was a big age gap between my sister and I, and um, she loves books and she loves vintage books as much as I do. So I phoned a friend, <laughs> I sent her a picture and said, do I leave these here? She said, I would get them. <laughs> so that made me feel a little better. Um, now, a next thing I got, I'm always a sucker for, just like I said, baskets with a nice uh, vintage patina on them. I paid $3 at the flea market for this one. And I thought it's just a perfect size for, I had put some of these books in here and it was very pretty display wise, but I also thought, you know, plants or, I mean, how many things do we need to store? A million. So that was a nice find. And then I also, I gotta move my books out of it though. I also got another basket that I wanna show you but it's heavy because it's full of books. And let's see if I can hold it up. It is a big basket with handles on each side. Holds a lot. It's just such a pretty, the handles, let me see if I can show you. The handles fold over. And it's just a beautiful market basket looking piece. And I paid 15 for that at a flea market which is usually higher than I'll pay. That's probably about the max I would pay for a basket, even with the patina on it. But honestly, if you look at, you know, Pottery Barn or Restoration Hardware and, and their baskets that have that beautiful vintage patina, they make sure they get those. But I mean, they start at $75 and up. So I'm always looking at that. So I go, okay, now I need to get the look without the price and because I just can't see myself paying that for baskets, no matter how beautiful, just not at this point in life, you know what I mean? So, um, what's next? Oh, these were a really fun find, and these were at the thrift store, so I got them for not a whole lot. They are mid-century. I looked into them a little bit. They're called Grant, Grant Crest, and they're mid-century, and they're like the Melmac, Melamine, and I got six, one, two, three, four, yeah. I got six of these and I paid maybe $2. I don't even know if I paid that much for them, but I just thought the rose pattern on there was really pretty and they were in really nice vintage condition. So these will be fun. You know, we're starting to think about spending time out on our patios and all that kind of good stuff. And these aren't breakable, so these would be really nice to set, especially with like a pink tablecloth or something. It'd be really cute. So that was that find. And then something else sort of a little girly-ish were these. I couldn't resist these little butterflies because it's in little handmade frames. And I thought they were so boho and pretty. They have that warm sort of yellow, beige yellow behind them. And I know that's so popular right now with all the boho kind of organic feeling um, interiors with lots of plants. And I do kind of lean towards the plant end of it. I have a hard time with the warm colors because I'm kind of a cool colors girl. I love my blues and greens and black and white and gray. Um, but using a little bit of those uh, warm colors I have found in a lot of uh, decor with the plants and stuff. If you want that warm, cozy feel right away, 
that's a great way to put it in there. But these were $5 for the set of four. The only disadvantage to them is they are pretty tiny. So I'm trying to think, I mean, you of course could put them all together and have a little bit more of a, of a display. But I'm trying to think of where I would actually put those if I decide to keep them. I have a thing for butterflies. I don't know why there's... Rob loves his mid-century stuff. He likes a touch of mid-century, like I said before. So he's always spotting this kind of stuff. He found this, let me put it together. It is very cool and it is extremely powerful, this blender. And it's a mid-century looking one. I don't think it's vintage. I think it's just vintage style because the cord looks modern. So it's just a vintage, it is in absolute perfect condition. And when we looked what these were selling for on places like eBay, it was close to $70 and we paid 12. Another plate that I found at an estate sale I don't know why I don't usually go for things like this, but it just had such a beautiful vintage feel. It does have a maker's mark, which I haven't looked into yet, but I loved the colors. I loved the vintage style of it. And of course the green, I'm putting a lot of green in my house. And I loved that it was hibiscus flowers because where I grew up in South Texas, we had huge hibiscus bushes outside in our um, flower gardens growing all year round. So I thought those were very beautiful. I don't know if it's a transfer. It's completely smooth, so it doesn't feel like a transfer. And you can see that it's, it is a pottery, I think, or possibly a porcelain, but it's uneven here. So I'm not sure the age on that, but I paid $5 for it. And it's pretty large as far as for a serving platter. I've got another basket I wanna show you. And I actually don't remember what I paid on this one. I, I'm sure it was not over $3. I might've paid two be, just because I liked it again because of the finish. Just had a little bit of a patina to it. I know these are fairly common, but they look really nice with plants in them if you wanna hide sort of the plastic nursery pot which I find the plants do really well in those, but they're ugly. So <laughs> you want to uh, usually find something to put them in. This was from the thrift store and you can see it's still got 292 priced on it, but you can, I just, the color, ooh. No, I don't think it has any mark on the bottom, but it definitely has a pottery ceramic feel to it. And you can see with this pillow back here that I love this turquoisey color. So just pretty with spring flowers in it or when I'm thinking about it, makeup brushes or something like that would be really cute in that on a dressing table. I found this anthropology mug. We don't have any J's in our family, but the anthropology used to sell these mugs with the initials on them and i used to have a t it was either a t or a p and it got broken and i think i had a couple of them and they ended up getting broken but i just love them and i don't think they i'm not sure that they sell them anymore but that was a i think that was a dollar 91. so even though it's a j i'll be using it then i found this cute little malachite box well I'm sure it's not real malachite, but it is that green of malachite. Just a simple little box. This was $3.93. This was a also a thrift store find, and I think it was close to $5. But you can see it is a restoration hardware piece, made in England for restoration hardware. It's got a little bit of... Uh, patina on the galvanized and it's quite a heavy galvanized piece. A lot of these newer pieces that you buy of galvanized are really thin. I mean, they just feel like aluminum or something. And this one's heavy and like a flower bucket. And because it's tall like that. So that's probably exactly what I'll use it for a plant or fresh flowers. This one's kind of a different kind of find. I wasn't sure whether I was gonna take it or not, but 
it was so, it was so cute and the price was good. So let me show you what it is. It is a coffee pot and then this is where and it even came with the filters that go in here and then you pour it's a pour over coffee and you pour hot water you put your coffee in there and you pour hot water and it drips through and then you've got your little pitcher of coffee and there it is this is Gavalia. You've probably heard of that. They have coffee. They, I mean, not particularly a super high-end brand or anything, but I just thought it was very cute and kind of unique. And I love the fact that there's no plastic or anything in this whole setup that you would drip your coffee through, you know, because hot water and plastic, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of. It was uh, $2.50, $2.50. My next one I was iffy on, and I'm really glad I went ahead and got it because I have a couple of decorating books that I was just looking through, and they had loads of these in there. And if I hadn't bought it, I would have been like, ah, oh, I should have bought that because they're so pretty. Um, it's these wooden bowls, real popular, again, with the boho, but also very farmhouse or rustic. Or even I've seen a lot of this kind of wood in modern interiors, just where they put that touch of rustic in there. So there was this sort of salad bowl size. And then there were four uh, bowls, but they're almost like plate bowls. You know what I mean? You could do salad in them. You could do bread. You could do fruit. If you wanted to put food in... They are wood and they seem like they have not been treated. They do have a mark and we looked it up. So they are food grade, you know, bowls and stuff. We probably wouldn't use them for food. I'd probably use them for decor. And if I did use them for food, like if I used them for bread or something, I'd probably put a little bit of parchment there. Clean them, you know, wash them really good. You can put food grade oil on these. And on your salad bowl, as a matter of fact, using your, um, with a lot of your wood salad bowls, you can season that, you know, before you uh, cut up your salad in there, you can put olive oil and rub some garlic on there and stuff and sort of season your bowl. And that's definitely doable and usable. But I thought, how pretty are they just for display on a shelf? Um, you could use these for a candle or, I mean, you probably have ideas you could catch jewelry with that or um, so many keys by your front door all kinds of good stuff so I know you guys have all kinds of ideas on these beautiful wooden bowls but they're just so pretty and I paid I believe $12 for the whole set which was not a bad price I didn't think it was a terrible price especially after I looked them up and they had the makers mark and everything and I looked them up um, it seemed like a decent value now I can't really pass up a good soup tureen. This one has the lid. Okay, let me show it closer to you. It's got almost like a little garlic or onion top. It's kind of cute. And then it's got the ladle. Okay. It's got the bowl the terrain and it is marked Luce, oh, starts with an L. I can't quite read it without some reading glasses on. Maybe you can see it there. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it was made in Portugal. If I'm not mistaken, when I looked at it in the flea market, I was able to see it better, but it came with that. And it also has the plate that goes under it. Lucarte, I think. Lucarte, made in Portugal, maybe. Let's see. Let's see if you can see that. So, very pretty set of all four of these pieces was $12. 
So again, more than I would pay. The last soup tureen I bought was Ironstone and it was 50 cents at a Goodwill about two hours from here. Um, and I ended up selling that on Marketplace. I've had two different soup tureens that I've sold on Marketplace um, just because I wasn't going to collect them or anything like that. But I may end up keeping this one just because it's such a big size. And I don't know if any of you go to Miss Mustard Seeds blog. Um, she has beautiful, she does sort of farmhouse cottage, uh, just beautiful, warm interiors, gorgeous stuff. She paints furniture, she makes slip covers, she has a paint line and she uses these soup terrines a lot. She'll make you want them because she um, just puts them on top of a beautiful piece of furniture in her dining room or something and just uses them sort of as artwork pieces. Very, very pretty. So that is something I might, I might try it. Oh, I forgot to show you, I got two gorgeous globes and I just couldn't pass them up. These two globes I saw at a flea market. The big one especially just really grabbed me. The colors on it, the topography on it. I just love that it's got the raised topography and you can just go all around the world and see um, the mountain ranges and stuff. But especially the size of it and the colors, uh, sort of the, the vintage turquoise on there, just beautiful. So I had to get the big one for sure. And it was 35. I actually saw one the same size um, a few days later at Goodwill for 25 and it wasn't nearly as nice. It didn't have the topography, it was just flat. It, it wasn't the sort of vintage colors on it. This one is much more beautiful. So I didn't feel too bad after that. And then the small one just was, had that vintage patina appeal to me. And it was, I believe 10. And so I don't know why, but I just ended up getting two globes. They go really well with those, with those antique books that I bought. So I kind of have in mind where I want to use those. And so I think this is my last piece to show you other than this cute little chair that I did get for $5 at an estate sale. And I'm not really actually sure what I'm going to do with it. I had kind of bought it to put that um, ombre fur on the seat, but I don't think it's a good mix. I kind of want to get something more um, modern or rustic but not as, this is almost more French country looking or something like that to me. And then I found at the flea market, oh, this thing's heavy, the ugliest stool. <laughs> Look at this, it's stained, the fabric, the fabric is worn out. Look at that. <clears throat> and this was $10, but then look, I looked at the legs. All of a sudden I lifted her skirt and the legs had such a beautiful vintage feel to them. And then I thought, oh, I'll put fur on that. But then look, right here is the original fabric and I think I might like it. So it looks like it might be black and white. So I'm gonna cut it <laughs> right here. I've been waiting to do this with you guys. Ooh, it's dusty, gross. Okay, here's the original fabric. Not too bad, but definitely not in the best shape. I could try cleaning it with my carpet upholstery cleaner. I could try, but look at these legs. Va -va -voom. So then I have one more thing to tell you about is, and I just love these black and white map prints. They're framed. One is really large and one is a little bit smaller. And also that it is well with my soul sign. I got thrifted, but the two larger um, maps I got for $20 for both. And that was all framed and everything, which I thought was pretty nice because one of them's really a good large size. And then the It Is Well With My Soul, I'm sure that's just like a Hobby Lobby or something piece, but it was, I wanna say a dollar or two. It wasn't much. And of course I love the black and white of it and I love what it says. So I thought it would be worth getting. 
Now, this I did not get a bargain on. It was at the flea market, but it was one of those things that just pulled on my heartstrings. I had told you that I had been looking for some blue and white to go with my lettuce wear. Well, turns out <laughs> that I found the, well, it's called the red transfer wear, but to me it's pink. It goes really well with pink and it will go with red also at Christmas, but I feel like through the spring and summer, I would use a lot of pink with it and it looks gorgeous with the green. These are Churchill, made in England. I paid 450, I believe, for the bowls. Four or 450 for the bowls. And this was at the flea market, just right up the street from me. I don't see the pink or red that often, and these are in pristine condition. So I got eight of the bowls, and I believe nine of the plates. And look how pretty those plates are. I don't know what it is about this transfer wear, but I just love it in every color. I just saw some in another flea market in a lavender color, purple. It was beautiful. And so I have the blue. I've been collecting the blue, you know, the blue and white pieces you've seen here and there. So I got nine of the plates, eight of the bowls. They had teacups and saucers and I passed on those. Um, so I had some restraint, not much. But then they also, in another booth, had, like I need more lettuce wear. But look how pretty that bowl is. And these are Holland mold. These are a little different than what I have already, but so, so pretty. And so when I say pinky red goes with the green, can you disagree? Look at that. One other thing I also found was a cute little bistro table and chair set when we were out thrifting. And it was, it looks like a bamboo or rat, rattan finish. Um, so pretty, all of it folds, the table, the chairs fold, really convenient to put away in the winter. And it was $35 for the whole set and it's all metal. So it's safe to keep it outside if you don't have a covered spot. Anyway, that's my thrift haul and antiques and estate sale finds. And I hope you had some fun with me looking through the pieces. And I hope you'll come and visit next time at Free Range Cottage. Thanks for watching.